I'll just share my screen. Okay, well, thank you, obviously, for the uh, for the kind introductions there, Christine, and obviously a big thank you to, to the guys for having us here today. So um, just to quickly introduce myself. So my name is Fraser. Um, I'm one of the customer success managers within the education team here at Vivox. And for essentially those that don't know, um, Vivox is a student response and engagement platform. So ultimately, our whole sort of ethos um, and what we're all about is increasing the levels of engagement and interactivity within the classroom um, and sort of boosting levels of uh, general sort of interactivity and engagement across the board um, but also um, just generally kind of providing an avenue for communication um, and just to try and enhance and make the learning experience uh, a little bit more sort of fun and, and, and exciting both for uh, for students um, as well as sort of teachers and, and lecturers as well so the way that we do that within Vivox is primarily through polling questions um, so interactive and engaging questions um, also through a Q&A board mechanism so the sort of ability for for, for sort of two-way questioning and, uh, and answers um, and both synchronous and asynchronous surveys as well. Um, so all of which I'm going to talk through on today's session. So I've got a bit of a presentation here initially, but um, before we go and sort of look at the practical bits, but um, just to introduce um, sort of the wider customer success team here at Vivox. So as I mentioned, I'm um, working in the education team, but we also uh, have a uh, have a business and commercial and SME team as well. Um, and ultimately, our job here in the customer success team is to really make the running of Vivox as smooth and seamless as possible for all of our customers. So uh, whether that's through training sessions and engagement sessions, and um, you know, like the, the likes of today for example being being invited along um, and just general sort of support um, we're obviously here to to partner with our customers um, and really make Vivox as successful um, and as seamless as possible for them so that's a little bit about myself and the team so in terms of today's session we're really going to look at the whole product um, from from top to bottom will be at quite a high level uh, just to kind of give you enough sort of information for what Vivox is all about and the certain things and functionality that is achievable through the product um, so what we're going to be doing initially is just looking at how to actually access Vivox um, and pretty much that resides in how to set up a new account if you haven't already got one um, and from there, we'll be looking at how to create a new uh, a VBOX session within your account. Uh, we'll then go through the process of creating and running polls, um, looking at things like the Q&A board and surveys. Um, and then depending on time, we may look at some of the other areas as well. So without further ado, I'm going to exit out of my presentation here and just flick over to my dashboard. So this is actually my Vivox account here. So this is what we're going to be using throughout the, uh, the course of today's demonstration. Um, and when you've created your own account, um, you'll be taken into a page that looks a little bit similar to this, although obviously without the sessions that were obviously um, pre-populated in my account here. Um, and these are from demos and various sort of training sessions and things that we've run in the past. But in order to create a new Vivox account for the first time, simply all you need to do is navigate to signup.vivox.com. Just let that load for a second. Okay, and once you've done that, you will come to a screen that looks very similar to this. So from here, um, you can then actually go through the steps and start creating your own account. So all you need to do is populate um, an email and a password initially, um, and then you'll be taken through the steps to actually create your free account. And you can see we've got some other information on here as well um, that you can go through and have a look at, um, as well as a link to our Trustpilot page. Now, I have actually got um, some promotional discounts to talk about at the end of today's session. So um, if anybody's interested in actually signing up for a, uh, for a paid or premium account, um, then we are actually offering um, a, a particular promotional code at the moment, particularly for anyone who's joining today's session. So I'll talk more about that at the end. Um, but let's go back to my dashboard here and actually just have a look through the platform. So if I want to go ahead and create a new session in Vivox, which is pretty much the core part of the, the product here. So everything that takes place in Vivox happens inside a session. So whether that's our polling, our Q&A, our surveys, um, that all takes place inside of our session. So to actually create a new one, very Simply, all we need to do is go to create session up here in the top left and then give our session a name. So I'll just populate something in here and then click create. 
And then once I've done that, as you can see, I'm then taken through into my new session. Now, from within here, we then have our main navigation menu over here on the left. So we can access our polls, which is where we are currently, our Q&A, our surveys, as well as our data and our settings. We can also then access all of our sort of information and resource articles here as well. So things like our help center, which if I just very quickly demonstrate, um, we've got a full uh, online sort of database and help center that can help you uh, with any of the areas that you're looking for inside the platform. Uh, we've also got our YouTube channel just on our videos button there. So again, this will take you to our YouTube page. We're pretty sort of regularly active on here. So you can see lots of content and tips and tricks videos all about uh, all about VVox and sort of other um, uh, personnel's use of the platform on our YouTube page. Um, but generally speaking, as you can hopefully see, it's a pretty sort of uh, simple and nice user friendly interface uh, within the uh, within the platform here. Now, because we've just created this brand new session um, and we can see that if I hover my mouse over my session name and ID at the top here, um, you can see it's automatically generated a unique nine digit ID. So every VVox session has its own nine digit code um, and that is how our audience can then actually join the session from, from their side. Now, one thing to be aware of is this session is currently in a waiting state. So just one final thing we would need to do here, um, and that's to click our start session button. So that will then clear our banner notification. Um, and this is now essentially a live session um, that's ready to go. So we would now be able to start inviting our participants to this um, and then actually going through the, the process of running any polls that we've created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my back to sessions list button here and just take us back to my landing page. And, and we're just gonna go through and actually look at the session here that I've already set up for the purposes of today. Now, within this session, we've actually already created a number of different polling questions. So you can see within here, these are all represented by the white boxes and the different images. Um, and in a second, I'm going to ask you all to join the session um, and then we'll go through and run some of these questions through the present view. So essentially you'll be getting the feel for how VVox works um, actually as an audience and participant member. So you should really um, get the full effect of what the platform has to offer. Um, just before we do that, however, just want to very quickly talk about how we actually create our questions. So very simple. Again, all we need to do is inside of our polls menu, we would click on the create new button up here in the top left. Um, and then this is going to open up what we refer to as our question builder. So from within here, using my drop down at the top there, my question type drop down, we can actually choose from eight different question types that we have inside the platform, all of which you can see on screen currently. So for this demonstration example, I will just stick with a multiple choice, which is probably the traditional um, sort of mostly used question type even today. Um, and then all I need to do is then actually just program my question title. So for this, I'm going to put uh, what is the largest muscle in the human body. OK, and then once I've programmed my question that I want to ask my audience, I then, for my multiple choice question, need to just go and program my multiple choice option. So I will go ahead and once again put a couple of choices in here. Um, and I can either do that by mousing into the next line below or clicking enter. Um, and let's go for one more. And then what I can do from here is then actually define one of these options as the correct answer. So I would do that by clicking the show correct answer button next to the relevant one. So it looks like an A with a tick next to it. Um, and you can see on doing that, I've now also unlocked my correct answer explanation. So I can then actually add some more sort of insight and context into why in this case, the glutes is the correct answer to this question. Um, and that will all happen when we do our big reveal on our present view. So a final thing I'll mention here is that we can also add imagery to our questions as well. So if I click on the insert image button next to our title there, I can either browse from my local machine here um, by clicking on the white box, or if I click on the image library, which uses um, Unsplash's image library, as we have a collaboration with them, um, I can then actually type in and search for an image and I can pull that directly into my question. So I found this handy chap here that I quite like the look of. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save and then click create 
And I've now just created a new, uh, a brand new polling question. Um, and then by default, that has put it at the bottom of my list. Now I could move that if I wanted to, I could put it to the top, for example, but by default, it will always add it to the bottom. So yeah, hopefully you've just seen from that really sort of quick process. Um, you can go through and, uh, and smash out, you know, a number of questions very, very quickly with the simplicity of the question builder. But what I want to do now is, is like I said, is I want to get you guys actually um, getting involved and joining this active session. And we'll just go through and run a couple of these questions on the present view. So I'm going to click over here and click on my present full screen button. Um, and this is essentially the screen that one would share with um, with their audience, either sort of physically, if they're in a, a you know a classroom perhaps, or um, um, you know a sort of teaching arena. Um, otherwise, this is the share uh, the screen that we'd also share if you were teaching remotely. So as we are right now, for example. Um, so what you guys need to do in order to actually join this session is to just follow these joining instructions over here on the left. So basically, all you need to do is on any web browser. So Google Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, it doesn't matter, is navigate to vvox.app. And then when prompted to do so, you just want to type in the nine digit code. So vvox.app and then the nine digit code. Or alternatively, if I click on the QR code, um, you can then actually scan that with your smartphone. Um, and then that will also then take you directly into this session as well. So I'll just give you guys a couple of seconds to, to do that there. Um, and then we'll go through and look at some of the questions. Obviously, if anybody has any problems as well getting access, then, then just shout. Um, but I think I will move us forward. So hopefully everyone's managed to just join there. Uh, but if not, just let me know. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch our first polling question. So when I move my mouse, we reveal this handy control bar down here at the bottom. So this basically controls all aspects of our present view. So if I click my uh, green slash blue open poll button here, um, what that is going to do is launch our first polling question. So this is our work cloud question, and it's asking us, what was your favorite book as a child? Um, as you can see, I can expand and reduce the image there, um, but also you will see that on your own participant app. So if you guys just want to go ahead and actually uh, populate a couple of responses to this question, that would be good. And what I'll do is I will click show results so that the results come into the work cloud straight away. So I'm going to put a couple in here for myself. And essentially with time, you will see your work cloud build and kind of shift and morph depending on all of your responses that are coming into the work cloud. Um, also, the more a word is used and submitted into the work cloud, the larger it will appear. So if I go ahead and submit this, for example, we will now see that Dear Zoo is now the biggest item in the work cloud because it's now been mentioned the most. So obviously there's only a few of us on today's session. So you have to kind of imagine how this would look with a much sort of larger uh, audience. Um, but work clouds are really great for, for sort of those icebreaker questions and initially kind of just engaging your audience. Um, also sort of preempting them for how you're actually going to be using VBOX throughout the rest of your session. Uh, but these are just really fun um, and also really quite visually impactful as well when you, when you sort of get a, a nice big work cloud so um yeah that's just a very quick look at a work cloud question guys so thank you very much for your input on that there so what i'll do is i'll close this poll um and i will uh move us on to the next question um and yeah that was just a little comment there from uh from someone in the chat regarding uh aot so we had some uh, some some great work clouds at the old uh, C conference this year absolutely so um yeah you can kind of get a feel for for how those can be used so um yeah let's move us on to the next question so um this is just a standard multiple choice question guys so very similar to what you just saw me set up earlier um, but this is asking us great expectations all of a twist and bleak house are all titles by which famous author so you just want to select on your participant app which one you believe to be the correct answer um, very simple uh, click of your mouse um, or a tap of your finger with your phone 
Um, and I'll just give that a second there. So everybody has now responded to this question and I can see that using my response count there in the top right. So number on the right is representing the current participants we have in our session and the number on the left is the number of responses with, we've had. So uh, we've had three out of three there. So what I can do is now close my poll once I'm happy and that will then reveal that everybody has voted for Charles Dickens in this case. Um, so the final step as part of this question then guys is then to obviously actually reveal the, the correct answer. So once again on my control bar it's now just the next option along so show correct answer um, and that will then reveal that of course Charles Dickens is the correct answer to this question. So we can see that up here um, and we can also see a bit of uh, further sort of context and information about Charles Dickens here as well. So that's where that correct to answer explanation will come in. So let's have a look at possibly one or two more. So I'm going to run my next question here, guys. So this one is our pin on image style question. Um, I really like this one. So this is essentially where um, you have an image um, and then in the back end, we can overlay uh, where we believe to be the correct part of this question. So in this case, it's asking us on this image of the human skeleton, can you locate the patella? So all you need to do on your device is whether it's on your phone, you simply want to tap on the area and then submit your pin. Um, or if you've joined on the uh, on the participant app through your browser, you want to click your mouse on the relevant part of the image to where you believe to be correct. In this case, where is the patella? Um, and then submit your pin, and then that will uh, that will send your submission through into the question. So I'll do the same as well on mine over here. Um, and what I can do is I can show my results here again using my uh, show results button um, and again that will then make the question live and dynamic at this point so what i could actually do is clear my pin and clear my choice um, and then vote somewhere else entirely and then you'll see that will then actually update live on the question um, so essentially the audience can change their mind as much as they like right up until the last minute of when you actually close that poll off uh, but sometimes there are times when uh, you might want to make the question um, live and dynamic like we did with the word cloud for example um, but for some other ones generally speaking we would advise that you don't do that uh, just um, to sort of be careful not to sway opinions and, and thoughts of others in the audience by doing that um, but let's close that one off there um, and finally reveal the correct answer once again so um, yeah thanks guys for your responses on that there but we can see that the patella is obviously the kneecap so anybody who's gone within the uh, with the knee area there obviously would have got a correct point as part of this question uh, within that circle and we've set those up behind the scenes in the question itself and then we can also see again um, a bit of a sort of correct answer explanation a bit more context around the, uh, the patella there so I think that's probably everything we'll look at in terms of the questions there, just sort of being conscious of time, guys. But hopefully that's giving you a nice flavor for the uh, for the types of questions that we can run within the platform. Um, obviously, we've only looked at three types there, but there's eight in total. So um, really, you're only actually limited by uh, by your sort of imagination with sort of what you're what you're looking to set up and what you're looking to do. Um, but you can also click into your question selector on your toolbar. Um, and you can jump back to previous questions, for example. Uh, we can go back to our word cloud. I could even rerun my word cloud if I wanted to. Um, but we could also jump forward as well. So I could jump straight to question 12, for example, and run that now. So uh, you do have that flexibility as well. Um, the other thing before we move on is that we also have a leaderboard in the platform as well. So if I click on my trophy icon there, that will display the leaderboard. Um, and then that will reveal where you've actually come within that quiz there. So that is because some of those questions had correct answers behind them. So on your device, it will now tell you essentially where you came within that quiz. Um, now, today's session is being run anonymously, which is how most VBOX sessions typically are run so no one is going to be um, sort of named or shamed here um, but what we could do is we could run this session in an identified manner uh, which would mean if I then clicked on my full list button we would actually see an individual um, sort of uh, itemization of where everybody came within that quiz so you do also have the ability to run VBOX like that as well okay so 
I think we'll close the leaderboard there um, and have a quick chat now about the Q&A board. So like I said, we've looked at a few different polling questions there and hopefully that's given you a nice sort of flavor guys for the types of things that um, there are actually achievable within the, within the platform. Um, but by default, when we're not running any polls, um, this is our screen that will display on our present view, uh, but this also doubles as our Q&A board. So on your participant app, which will look a little bit something like this, you actually have a second tab in here which looks like a little speech bubble icon um, and you have the ability to actually populate questions into here so if i was to go ahead and type in uh let's just populate something in there and then go back to my q a board you can see that that has now actually come through onto the onto the live q a board so this is a really nice way to sort of get your audience involved um within a, a sort of another aspect so they can actually pose comments and questions into uh into the session directly so uh, you guys are more than welcome to uh pose comments and things in here if you want to um, sort of test how that functionality works but from a uh, host point of view and a, a functionality point of view what we can do is actually then expand that question so we can click on that uh, that comment there um, and then if this was a legitimate question for example we could then go through and then address that with our entire audience um, have a bit of a general discussion about it sort of get some ideas and things flying around in the room um, and then when we're happy uh, we can then go ahead and hide that question and then move on to the next one so if i just put another one in here again just to show you that you can also like each other's questions as well so this is really good for the students because they can kind of uh, like each other's comments and things that have come into the q a so i can like my own question there um, and you guys have just done that as well so you can see that then that has boosted the amount of likes for that question um, and by default the q a board will filter based on the most liked questions so um, this is a really nice way to kind of identify the questions that are most important to everybody else as well um, but you can also change that and filter by the most recent so it really just depends on what you're looking to do there but the Q&A board is just a really good way to sort of get everybody involved um, allow them to be a bit more expressive and almost have that sort of direct line of communication to you the host um, and the uh, and, and the sort of teacher in that scenario um, it's also really good to be able to um, actually have the anonymity that VVox offers as well. So when you're running that session anonymously like we are today, um, something like the VVox Q&A board should hopefully empower everybody, you know, even the quietest sort of uh, uh, voice in the room to still feel confident enough to be able to ask a question or a comment um, into, uh, into something like the Q&A. Um, so I'll just hide my question here from earlier. It looks like we've actually had a legitimate question come through. So. Someone's asked, is it possible to share follow-up questions on someone else's questions? Um, yes, you can do. Um, so what, what you could do as of right now is you could download the Q&A board after your session as a, as a sort of Excel export. Um, and then you can actually go through and respond to questions that have come in like that. Um, we are actually working sort of internally on a mechanism as well in terms of actually being able to respond to other people's questions more easily inside the platform. Um, so at the moment, it's really more for capturing uh, questions and responses um, as opposed to responding to them. But you could sort of do that. Um, you know, audibly by sort of um, just sort of uh, discussing the question as we would normally do, uh, but we are actually sort of working on how we can actually make that a bit more efficient as well within our sort of product roadmap. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, is just to keep us on time, and hopefully that's answered that question there, but we can dive into that a bit more afterwards if needed um, i'm going to exit out of my full screen here and i'll come back to any of these questions that have come in at the end so if you guys do have um any legitimate questions that you want to throw through into the q a board based on anything you've seen in the session so far or in general yeah please feel free to to fire those in and we'll sort of come back and review those at the end so just to quickly mention as well um we do also have the ability as a host to submit a message as well so i can again program my host message in here um, and then you can see that then places through onto the q a board in a slightly more distinct fashion so you can see that has come from me the host um, also within our q a tab and this is essentially the back end of the q a board if you think of it like that um, we also have the uh, the archive tab so you can see those questions I archived earlier um, they haven't disappeared um, they're just now in another area 
Um, but we can also do things like um, enable moderation on the Q&A. So that essentially adds like a layer of uh, sort of uh, security, if you will, as it means all of the questions have to be um, actually physically published into the Q&A first uh, before they will uh, automatically appear. So we do also have that there as well. So just to keep us on time, we'll have a quick look at these surveys as well. So within Vivox, you also have the ability to run uh, surveys. So um, this is designed more for the sort of asynchronous uh, sort of style of teaching. Um, and I have a geography quiz here that I'm actually going to start there. I'm just clicking my start quiz button. Um, and again, on your participant app, you should now see a third tab having now appeared. It looks like a little clipboard with a with a red dot above it um, and if you click on that um, you will then be able to go through and just experience what this uh, self-paced quiz looks like from a student's perspective so with the uh, with the quizzes um, or sorry with the surveys you have the ability to run surveys and quizzes so they are sort of two separate things in the platform um, but like I say these are really good for the sort of asynchronous style of teaching so um, the, the sort of idea being that these can be um, entirely uh, completed in students own time so um, that quiz scenario there that I've just uh, that I've just launched is fully self-paced so when you go through it it will tell you the, where you went wrong on your questions where you went right and then on those scenarios where you went wrong it will sort of give you more information around why you went wrong as well so um, really good for yeah sort of additional uh, activities that are that are in the in the platform um the way you create these surveys is very similar to how we created those polling questions earlier so you would just click create new give your survey a name and a bit of a description um, and then you would just build your questions out um, using the question builder there so I think that's kind of everything I wanted to show you guys on the uh, on the present view here. Uh, I will just mention that we also have our data tab. So this is pretty much where all of your data for your session will be held. So we'll see things like levels of participation and engagement. Uh, we can see number of poll responses and things like that. And if I scroll down, I can see the actual individual results of all of our questions that we ran earlier. And all of these can then be downloaded as images afterwards as well. Um, it's also worth mentioning you can download a data report. I sort of alluded to it earlier, uh, but you can download a fully comprehensive um, Excel output of your entire VBOX session. Um, and then that will give you uh, even more sort of data and information than what's available here. And then just finally, um, I think I would mention that you've also then got your settings tab. So um, just kind of conscious of time, we won't go through this now, but um, essentially this is where you would go through and control um, all different avenues of how your session behaves. So we can add things like a contents to the session and a bit of an agenda. Uh, we can apply things like theming and customizations. Uh, we can uh, change the level of identification. So whether we're running that anonymously versus identified, we can change things like our sort of general display features. So all of the settings in here can be tailored uh, based on that particular session um, and depending on what you're looking to do at that moment in time. So I think that is everything I wanted to show you guys today in terms of the, uh, the, the present view. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly go back to my presentation here um, and just talk through another uh, couple of areas very quickly. So um, as I mentioned, we do have lots of support resources um, available at VVOX. So um, that's including our YouTube channel, um, our help center I mentioned earlier. Uh, we do also have a fully live chat function baked into the platform as well so um, support is always on hand for whenever you need it at any point in time we also have a support mailbox at support at vvox.com um, and the final thing that i would mention is that we also have a powerpoint add-in as well so pretty much everything you've just seen today in terms of well particularly the polling um, the the questions that we've created we could also have created those and run those questions directly through my PowerPoint deck here. So we do also have a native uh, PowerPoint add-in as well. So you also have an alternative workflow for how you would like to use VBOX. So as mentioned, guys, we've got our YouTube channel um, that you can use to, to keep up to date on all of our sort of content and iterations that, and things that come into the platform in terms of product updates and things, um, as well as our newsletter. So if anybody's interested, definitely always recommend having a look at that there uh, and subscribing to the newsletter to keep informed. Um, but the final thing I wanted to mention is that I have some good news for, for anyone on the session today and anybody who's watching this um, recording at a later date um, in that for you guys, we've offered a special 
uh, promotional activity uh, which will remain active over the next few weeks or so um, and that's for anybody who would like to actually sign up to either a starter or premium education plan um, all of which you can do on our website um, so on our main website just to very quickly show you Apologies, that's the wrong one there. So within education, so on our main website, um, you've got our uh, education pricing and plans here. So if anybody wants to, uh, obviously you have the free plan guys, that is always available to you. That's not going anywhere anytime soon, um, but this will tell you the levels of functionality that is available within each of the plans. Now, if anybody does want to explore some of the, uh, some of the more premium plans here, such as the starter or pro plans, um, then as I mentioned, we are offering a uh, pre uh, promotional discount code for you all um, for the next few weeks or so, um, and that is Amplify FE. Um, it doesn't matter about the uh, the case sensitivity, so um, it's just literally Amplify FE, and that will then give you 40% off um, any of those plans. So that is just something that I thought I would mention because um, that's something that we've done uh, specifically for for you guys today. So I think without further ado. Um, Happy to take any questions at this point. So I know there was something that popped into the um, into the Q and A. So I'll just go back to that quickly um, and have a look at that. So yeah, if anybody does have any final questions, guys, that you want to fire through into the Q and A board here, you're welcome to do that or um, into the uh, into the chat here. So let's have a look at this one very quickly. So on polls, is it possible to have explanations for incorrect answers? Although this might not work with the live interaction of polls. Yeah, good question. This is actually something that um, that has come up before um, around being able to um, sort of have different explanations for different responses. Um, it's not something that's in place at the moment, um, but it is something that has actually come up before in the past. So um, I believe it is something that um, we would potentially look to uh, look into in the future within our product roadmap um, but at the moment um, it, it, it's not something that's in the platform right now so the correct answer explanations are only available um, on uh, on well it, it's actually a generic box essentially so you could really put in there whatever you wanted but generally most of the time people will put in there the explanation around the correct answer um, but it is just an open text field so you could actually if you wanted to um, expand on that and then you know talk about why some of those other options are incorrect if that makes sense so you could technically do that um, as it is just an open uh, an open text field um, but it's not specific per response type if that makes sense but like I say that may be something that we look at into the future uh, but really good question though thank you uh, thank you very much for that um, but uh, yeah, I can't see anything further coming into the Q&A here, guys. Oh, no, stand corrected. There's one here. So uh, can a quiz remain open after a live class for students to complete later as long as the viewer session is open? Yeah, really good question. Um, and absolutely. So um, basically, a VVOC session is open indefinitely. So the session that we're running here today, for example, um, this will remain open um, unless I physically go in to my um, to my session ID up here and end the session. So, yeah, it, it, it's not sort of time limited. You know, this will stay open for uh, for as long as I basically want it to stay open, really. Um, but one sort of key point I would make here is that you can only have one um, live poll open at a time. So the live polls that we ran earlier, um, so all of these ones that we've got here, uh, we could open any one of these polls. Um, but only one poll can remain open um, at a given time on the uh, on the live polling. Um, but that is then where your surveys would come in. So things like your or your surveys or your quizzes. So um, there is a distinction between the two. Um, they can be left open um, again for as long as you like. And then students can come in um, and uh, respond to those surveys whenever. Um, and actually, a little tip around that is if I just go to my uh, whoops, very sorry, back to my tab here, and I bring up my participant app so what you could do is you could copy the url so if you open this as a participant which you can really easily do from inside the platform so again you just hover over your session id and then you would click open participant app 
Um, so now this is essentially giving you the view that you would see if you were an attendee or a student, for example, um, which is actually quite nice to be able to test your own sessions, for example, if you're wanting to do that before you actually run it live. Uh, but what you can do is if you navigate to your surveys tab, and then you copy the URL exactly as it is with the survey suffix there. We can then copy this um, and then paste this somewhere else. Um, and then the students will be able to directly access that survey. For example, um, they will be able to just click on that link straight away um, and they will be taken directly into the server that you set up. So that's also a really easy way to distribute any of the surveys that you've got configured. Um, so that's just another uh, quick little tip for you there as well. So hopefully that's answered that question there, but yeah, really a really good point. Um, and uh, thank you for, for raising that one. Um, if there's any more questions that anybody wants to submit through, obviously please feel free to, to do that now. Um, otherwise, um, I think we're probably just about um, on time. I know we started a little bit later, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's probably about it guys in terms of everything I wanted to show you and just, a big thank you for from me for for attending today and obviously if you're watching this recording afterwards as well then a big thank you as well um and if anybody does um, want any additional information after watching this um then obviously don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we'll do what we can to support you um but uh yeah a big thank you once again and thank you to the to the guys for having us here today um and i uh, hope you will have a good rest of the afternoon and week ahead Perfect. Thank you, Fraser. That was really interesting. It's great to see an insight into how Vivox works properly. Finally have some time to look into it as well. So yeah, excellent. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now. And of course, we'll be sending that out to everyone that has registered and circulating it on Twitter as well and all of our other platforms.